Hello and welcome to Fish on Northwest. Wayne and Tommy Donlin. I'm proud of all the things. <laughs> what do you think, Tommy? I'm thinking that the best. Hello and welcome to Fish on Northwest. Winning on coming to you from the Fish on Northwest studio. Located here in Olympia, Washington. Uh, yes, flying solo, uh, un <laughs> unplanned. You know, credit to my uh, my partner here. He drives down every week uh, in the traffic and fighting his way through here. It takes him an hour and a half or so. Uh, and unfortunately, tonight he had a little bit of a uh, little bit of a uh, issue with the uh, with the truck. So there he is, stranded on the side of the road, and hopefully he's getting that resolved. But we got a great show lined up for you, and I don't think Tommy's going to make it, but I'm going to do my best to. Get you all the info as we get through the evening here. I want to thank everybody for joining us. If it's your first time uh, tuning in here, especially here on Root Sports, take a moment, jump on over to our webpage, www.fishhuntnw.com. There you're going to find a lot of insightful information, links to all our video content, a lot of blogs. Of course, also pay attention to the coupon codes, Edge Rods, uh, FHN20 at checkout. You're going to receive 20% off all Edge Rods all the time if they're not previously attached to another special or reduced pricing. Uh, and then of course, Phelps Game Calls, Fish Hunt NW20. Through the end of April, we have Fish Hunt NW20 at Phelps Game Calls. For all turkey calls, obviously it's turkey season. We're trying to help you out with the purchase of those turkey calls through the end of April. Uh, please take advantage of that. So, hey, just um, catching everybody up. Yes, we did make it up to the Skagit for the last few days here. Myself, a uh, longtime buddy, Bill Herzog, and of course, Jordan. And we spent a couple days on the river. And of course, as we kind of talked about last week and as was projected, the weather took a little bit of a turn. I mean, it's been fantastic here the last couple of days, 65, 70 degrees today here in Olympia. Um, not so much the case Monday and Tuesday, when we were out there on the water, wind was blowing like crazy uh, off and on. Had some rain, snow in the forecast Tuesday morning. Thankfully, it didn't come uh, come through. But uh, we got some good quality time on the water. Gosh, second day, Tuesday, we had the entire upper Skagit first boat down. And let me tell you, if you've never floated that particular stretch of river, man, you're missing out. Some of the cleanest, cleanest, clearest, deep water trenches, I mean, structure. You guys that fish it know what I'm talking about. It is a magical place. And we fished hard for two days. We actually only hooked two fish, one each day. Uh, buddy Bobby Kratz and his wife Tracy were out there fishing with a buddy, and they had a pretty good day on Monday. They got into three or four fish, it sounded like. So there were a few around. Most of the boats we talked to, it was one fish here, one fish there, or none. Maybe a few dollies and some white fish, but you know, that place is special. And um, Definitely worth opportunity when they open it up for that catch and release. If you can get up there, you know I had the they had the privilege of getting out. It doesn't sound like much, and actually it's not. I had six, no four, four scheduled steelhead trips this winter. It was all I could fit in. Six days on the water, but you know it was pretty efficient, and uh, had some good outings. I think I landed, I landed a total of twelve steelhead with six days on the water. Some high number days and some days where I got blank, but. Um, all in all, eight of those actually came on the old Robolize Oki. Now, not this size. That's a 41 millimeter, Joe sent me. Uh, the size four in the Sunrise just absolutely killed it for me this year. Got to give him credit. I mean, hooked up and landed eight fish on that Sunrise Oki and couldn't be happier. Of course, uh, because they had just rolled them out, uh, rolling that, that uh, two-aught bead hook by Gamakatsu coupled in with that Oki Drifter was just phenomenal. I did not lose a single fish, fish that I hooked on that particular combination. Matter of fact, I landed every steelhead I hooked this season on all Gamakatsu uh, hooks. And the only three that I didn't uh, didn't tangle with are ones I didn't ever really have a chance to get a hook into. So uh, pretty high hookup to land ratio with my Gamakatsu hooks this year. And I also got to tip my cap Fished with some pretty fishy dudes uh, this season. Got out with, you know, Bobby Kratzer, Mike Ainsworth, 
uh, Kyle Bushelman down in Oregon, of course, Bill Herzog. And we had some great, great days on the water. Hopefully you all were able to get out and find some time and find some really nice steelhead out on the coast or Willapa system, Southwest Washington, or up north when that finally opened. So things to look forward to down the road. Summer on Steelhead is not too far away. All right, running down the show. we got a lot to get through. Great guests lined up this evening. Going to start off with Jared Gibbons, Okanagan Valley Guide Service. Time to talk some turkey, uh, turkey hunting, youth hunt success, and how turkey hunting is such a great youth recruitment option. Also, part two of Jared, turkey hunt options. We'll talk techniques and approaches ground blinds and or spot and stock, what's your preference? Uh, walking through the 2024 big game regulations, there are some changes that caught my attention, kind of interesting. Uh, and also, is there actually any benefit to purchase of the multi-season tag for deer and elk? I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that and opportunity number of days in the woods. Also, Josiah Dar coming back, JDAR guided fishing, Springers by the numbers, and will the Willamette actually fish this season? Part two of Josiah Techniques, and an approach now versus later in the season with changing conditions. Then I want to uh, break down some fishing opportunities. We'll cover the openings, uh, some dates, opportunities, and, of course, the season-long WDFW Trout Derby that will kick off here with opening day. So uh, after that, we'll close out the show. Plenty of content to get through. So glad you're joining me this evening. Uh, don't go anywhere. Jumping out for a quick break. We come back. Jared Gibbons, Okanagan Valley Guide Service, talking turkeys with Jared. After the break, right here, Fish on Northwest. The Pines Marine is the one-stop shop for the Pacific Northwest Angler. The Pines Marine guarantees the best price on a new and best service on a repower for your current boat. The Pines Marine is a Honda Premier dealership and one of the largest on the West Coast. The Pines Marine is a boat dealer who proudly sells Defiance, Allied, and Arima boats. All boats are built by West Coast fishermen for West Coast fishermen. The Fines Marine has all your boating needs to help you get out on the water. If you're looking for the best fishing rods in the world, you really do need to take a look at the edge rods. I designed and built new machinery, and I think this new machinery has enabled us to build blanks like no other company can build without this equipment. There is no other rods in the world that are as good as these rods. You owe it to yourself to take a good look at them. For more than 90 years, you've entrusted one brand to guide you towards living the lifestyle you've always dreamed of. Now you can entrust affiliated Better Homes and Gardens real estate professionals to interpret your needs and help you find the home in which to live your dreams through every stage of your home buying or selling process. And through every stage of your life, there's Better Homes and Gardens real estate. Expect better. All right, welcome back here in studio to Wayne England. Yes, still flying solo. Tommy is not making it guaranteed, so we're going to get through this tonight uh, through the show all on my lonesome. want to welcome to the show, longtime buddy. I've hunted over there, spent some time uh, in his uh, backyard knocking down some deer uh, in, in the past, and uh, just a great outfitter and guide. Jared Givens, Okanagan Valley Guide Service. Uh, thanks for taking time out this evening, everybody. I know you're extremely busy on these turkey hunts. And uh, find a little time to, to talk with us. Appreciate that. Hey, thanks for having me. Absolutely. So, Jared, you know, we had a pretty mild winter uh, looking at it overall. And typically, that seems to boost our turkey survivability and some pretty good numbers off of some of our seasons with mild winters. Um, so what are you seeing going into this spring, early season? Just started here. I mean, youth, and we'll talk about that here recently. And then, of course, the opener on the 15th. You seeing good numbers of birds around already? I am. I mean, this is the most birds I've seen in a long time. You know, there's a lot of young birds, lots of jakes out there, meaning we had a great hatch over this last spring. So uh, lots of lots of jakes, lots of toms, seeing tons of birds everywhere. So it's been a good season so far and should shape out to be really awesome. 
Fantastic. So you had that youth hunt to kick it off, uh, get that first week, and uh, weather was still a little bit on the chilly side. I know I saw some photos getting bounced around on social media platforms with some, you know, some kids with big smiles, snow in the background, depending exactly where they're hunting. Um, did you, you got out on a couple of youth hunts uh, that first week, and how'd it go? Uh, I had two youth kids. They were both 14 years old. Uh, it went really good. It just happened to be on that Friday when it was raining sideways. So, oh. of course, we took out the ground blinds and uh, and and hunkered down. And, of course, we, we called in some birds right off the get-go. We set up pretty close to the roost because they're, they're really hand up that first week during youth season. So, it's you got to get really tight to them. Gotcha. And we called in some hens and, and we shot a jake. And, and then uh, we just hung out. There's no reason walking through the woods or or doing anything like that so we just hung out and heard a gobble in the distance and an hour and a half later you know we ended up calling that one in it was absence to be all by itself and and we ended up getting it calling it right into the deep that's awesome so i want to focus a little bit on this uh, youth opportunity um you know i look at it as a great recruitment tool uh to get youth interested in hunting i mean in and you're doing it you know that approach is fantastic get them in a ground blind sit in there with them you go through call progression you teach them you know, and then you're interacting and speaking with the birds, not to mention, you know, you get these kids out of the, out of the urban areas and, you know, the developed areas, you get them out there in the woods. And even as the sunlight, you know, peaks its head and, and daylight springs in the woods and the birds start making noise and you go through that progression of that symphony. I mean, that's, that's a game changer for a lot of kids who don't typically get to experience that. Talk a little bit about, you know, what you, what you see in the reaction of these kids or how important do you think, it is to utilize a uh, youth turkey hunt or just get them out there on a turkey hunt through the season uh, to, to inspire them. Well, like you said, turkey hunting is a good way to get, you know, youth kids or getting people hooked into hunting, you know, being out there early in the mornings and when it's pitch black out, we're all set up sitting in the blinds. And then all of a sudden you hear the birds starting to chirp, mm -hmm. uh, depending where you're at, all of a sudden the ducks start flying by the geese start honking the woods and the area starts waking up and then you hear that first gobble in the morning. And they, as soon as that first gobble goes off, they turn their head and they look at you and their eyes light up <laughs> and they get all excited and you yeah. just smile back at them, you know, and just like, okay, yep, that's it. You know, we're going to get it, you know, we're going to give it a good shot. And they get all excited as they gobble in the trees for the next 15 minutes. And then they hit the ground and then you start working your calls and they just start getting excited and you got to calm them down. But it's a great, great thing taking my own kids out and seeing them shoot their first bird. And I mean, my kids are hooked for life. And, and most of these kids that I take out when they have that experience, uh, they're hooked for life too. And they can't wait to do it again. Yeah, for sure. And it's a great gateway to get them interested in hunting overall and recruiting them into the opportunity. You know, Turkey's a great starting point, but man, so much more we can do as we elevate into, you know, ground blind hunting for, for all types of animals, whether it's archery or uh, shotguns and rifles. So, uh, let's talk a little bit about how effective that can be uh, with kids in ground blinds, simply because, and I think you kind of mentioned it, you know, they get pretty antsy. Kids have a hard time sitting still unless they're messing with a fidget or <laughs> unfortunately want to be on their phone or something. So you're trying to detach them from their, you know, normal day surroundings, asking them to sit quietly and not move. And I just think the ground blind is probably your best opportunity to accomplish uh, that with them and, and hopefully they find some success. Absolutely. It's the only way to go with kids. And, and as soon as I have a kid hunting with me, we're, we're definitely hunting out of a blind. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, there's probably parents, grandparents who want to get their kids into turkey hunting. Um, probably also trying to decide, you know, what's a great, uh, gun to utilize. I'm a strong advocate of the 410 shotgun for kids, getting them started. What do you like to see them bring into the woods or to the ground blind with you when they come out for that first time? Uh, well, definitely with kids, I like seeing like a 20 gauge, okay. you know, uh, definitely something with uh, uh, maybe at least a full choke in it, you know, so we can reach out there 30, 35 yards. Yeah. And then if we get here, you know, they make those awesome rounds to make the TSS rounds that have been really awesome. Yeah. Just depending how big the kid is and how much, you know, how much meat they got on their shoulders, depending if you're going to shoot a turkey load or just shoots like a, a high base six shot. Yeah. You know, there is a difference between the two, but, you know, just depending on the size of them, you don't want to give them a flinch. But another good thing I've used with kids are the other tripods, like the Bog Pog makes a tripod that clamps onto the shotgun. Nice. It really, really helps for the kids, makes them nice and steady because they get nervous and they want to pull them. Right. So that, that really helps with the kids that I take out. 
and makes a good successful one. Yeah, that's excellent advice. Uh, good, good, really good, solid st stability platform that you know locks that shotgun in there and they don't they don't get as much recoil and they're more comfortable in shooting so excellent uh I'll tell you what you jump out for a quick break so don't go anywhere uh we'll jump out for a quick break and we'll be back with jared gig J jared gibbon so okanagan valley guide service we got some more techniques and tactics to get through right after this break right here fish on northwest allied the new leader in heavy gauge aluminum boats allied boats have standard reverse china and lifting rakes to help you plane faster and run at lower RPMs. Allied boats have several models to choose from, ranging from a 19-foot Mustang all the way up to a 32-foot Liberator. So regardless of what type of heavy gauge aluminum boats you are looking for, Allied boats will have it for you. Contact Allied boats today to learn more about these incredible fishing machines. Sportco and Outdoor Emporium is the largest local outfitter in the Northwest since 1975 providing thousands of people affordable outdoor gear. This summer, make your next outdoor adventure more affordable by shopping at our warehouse style pricing. We are a local Scotty dealer, offering sales, service, and repair. Located in Fife and Seattle, come visit us today. The outdoors await you. All right, welcome back here to the show, Dwayne England, flying solo, and uh, guest Jared Gibbons, Okanagan Valley Guide Service, www.okanaganvalleyguideservice.com. And Jared, uh, we're talking turkey, obviously. That's why you're here, and you got one stuffed behind your head, which <laughs> looks fantastic, by the way. Um, let's talk a little bit about uh, spot and stock approach. You know, such a great way to get out after them. Uh, I really enjoy doing that, um, creeping along the ground and trying to pull up in an area that you can get into undetected. Kind of talk about your approach on that. Use a uh, locator call, and if so, crow, woodpecker. What's uh, what's what's your program? Well, just early in the early in the morning, we can start off. You know, if if not sure where that bird is roosted up, maybe starting out with an owl call, something to locate, trying to find out where that bird's located early in the morning. And they're starting to sound off about five thirty, five twenty. So getting out there about you know quarter to quarter to five to five o'clock, locating that bird and being able to move in on them on an owl call. If that doesn't work, maybe switching to something like a coyote howler, mm -hmm. something to get them the shot gobble early in the morning to locate them and then then move in. Uh, uh, then later in the day, uh, definitely using something like a, a crow call. And then even a lot of people don't use maybe something like a peacock. Yeah, uh, Peacock really gets them the shot gobble as well. Awesome. So talk a little bit about your setup. So you guys, uh, you hit that locator, you find a bird, you put a plan in motion, you, you know, get on, get on foot and, and go, uh, go to that, go that direction. Now you're setting up, you get your shooter out in front of you, you kind of sit back and run the call kind of what, what's, uh, what's your program? Well, program, definitely trying to get on a level playing field with the bird. Uh, if you're hunting hilly country, trying to get on the same level, try not to set up downhill from a bird. Yeah, uh, It's a lot easier 90% of the time calling a bird uphill than it is down. So getting it on the level playing field, if not just on a plateau above it somewhere, calling it up. I'd, I'd love to do something like that. But this time of year, not necessarily hunting with a full strutter decoy. I have recently and I am tomorrow. But uh, throwing a Jake decoy out there, something that. Uh, a poof jig decoy. I use like Dave Smith decoys. They have a dominant jig decoy I like. Mm -hmm. and, and anything like that, even the jigs come in and want to attack it. So putting in, in a big wide open space, sitting back 20 yards and making sure you're sitting underneath a shady tree, uh, hitting them up. And then when they're in the tree, hitting them with some soft hill, hen yelps. Uh, definitely when the other hens start going off, 
I want to start hitting that, that hen and mimicking that hen, cutting it off. It starts yelping. I immediately come and hit it again with my calls, trying to mimic it. Sure. And this time of year, I'm just trying to call in that hen. Uh, that the toms are really hand up this time of year. So if you can piss off that hen and get that hen to come in, you're going to kill a bird. Yeah, for sure. And uh, you kind of talked about it before, you know, with the kids, uh, 20 gauge. And I had mentioned the 410. A lot of guys like to shoot turkey with a 12 gauge. Uh, you good with people showing up, even on spot and stock, if they want to archery hunt on turkeys uh, out there on a trip with you? Yeah, definitely. You know, I got one bow hunter coming this year and, and we're going to use a pop-up blind for that. You know, yeah. there's a lot of movement when pulling that bow back and, you know, those turkeys have 20 power vision so they can see you move your head just, just a bit. So using a blind on a bow is a definite. Yeah, that's a good point. Just even a subtle movement. Uh, and I've been busted a few times, <laughs> unfortunately, yeah. and it doesn't take much and you're right. They see so doggone good. Uh, you don't yeah. want to have any movement in the archery thing. I've done it uh, out of a ground blind for sure. That, uh, that cover is definitely a must. Um, hey, are you, uh, you got some private land locked up over there? Are you hunting all public? Is it a mixed bag with you again? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm just doing all private land hunting. Just the best way to have a, a nice, secure, you know, hunt to ourselves. Uh, it works out really good. We have birds all over the place. We have probably 15 different locations that we hunt, so plenty of birds. Fantastic. And you got some openings still through the end of uh, May? I do. You know, we have a, a weekend in April, and then we also have uh, – uh, one slot in mid-May as well. So get a hold of me on those. And, and I got some feelers out there. So first come, first serve, and we can get you set up. Okay. www.okanaganvalleyguideservice.com. Is that the best way to find you or your Facebook account? Uh, Facebook or that there, or reach me on the phone. Shoot me a text, uh, the 509-429-5199. Sounds like a plan, buddy. All right. Well, uh, I'll keep, uh, keep tabs on you. And we're looking for those pictures especially when you get a few more of them youth hunters out. I want to see uh, see the old grip and grin on a turkey for sure. Thanks for taking the time tonight, buddy. Uh, great info as always. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. You bet. All right. Jared Gibbons, Okanagan Valley Guide Service. Again, www.okanaganvalleyguideservice.com. Uh, he will get you on the birds. They got a ton of them over there, and uh, he is – he has uh, been doing it for a number of years. So, all right, uh, we're going to jump out for a quick break. Come back. I want to bounce a couple uh, changes in hunting regs that are kind of interesting and maybe talk a little bit about uh, multi-season. And uh, is it worth the money? Well, maybe we'll, uh, we'll find out it is. Don't go anywhere. Be back with that info right after this break right here, Fish on Northwest. Support from Northwest Sportsmen make federal ammunition the world's leading ammunition manufacturer. Federal uses the industry's finest materials, giving you reliable ammunition that delivers superb accuracy and optimum performance. Northwest hunters rely on Sportco to provide the best selection and prices in the Northwest since 1985. Sportco and Outdoor Emporium in Fife and Seattle. Your journey begins here. Yep, for sure. Oh, yeah. Big fish. Yeah, buddy. Nice fish. Oh, beauty. Gorgeous fish. Bobby's on the board. We got a good one. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, jeez. Come on. Nice fish. Nice fish. You haven't been here, but you know it. You've heard the sounds, smelt the air, and you've seen where your heart lands, if not yet. You haven't been here, but you've longed for a destination near or far, where time spent with loved ones and friends will go into the night and last in memories for a lifetime. You haven't been here, but you're on your way to a place not far. ExploreTheDowls.com. New days new beginnings, new friends, new loves, new dreams, new goals, new scenery, new job. No matter what the next chapter holds, Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate will be there to help you find the new that's right for your lifestyle at any stage of your life. Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate. Expect better. All right, welcome back here in studio to England and uh, 
couple of things, you know, I do a lot of reading throughout the week, trying to keep up on things. And of course, DFW released their updates in uh, hunting regs. And one that caught my attention, uh, reference to muzzleloader, uh, especially like for elk or deer, um, you know, he's always been uh, subjected to open sights. And so now as of late, uh, going into effect, you can uh, apply a red dot scope uh, onto your muzzle loader, which I found to be kind of interesting. Now, understanding that it's not truly a magnification type scope, it simply puts a, a red dot on the reticle. So uh, there's no any, there, it, you know, it doesn't project any light. There's no laser or other emission coming uh, from the scope as it's uh, uh, languaged here. The WAC language permits now electronic aiming devices on muzzle loading equipment. Those devices are red dot or similar electronic power devices. So kind of nice to know that uh, we're making that change. I think uh, I think folks will take full advantage of that. Open sites has been kind of cool, but uh, that red dot can really be a game changer for you and something to look forward to. Also, uh, something else during muzzleloader season, they've now made it so that you can also choose to utilize a crossbow. Um, you can you can go ahead and utilize a crossbow. The purpose of this proposal is to allow the use of crossbow equipment during muzzleloader season. So now you have a couple options to utilize. Obviously, in, in some regards, some of our hunts, uh, you can always choose a weapon of lesser, um, lesser uh, technology, so to speak, right? If it's rifle season, you can use a muzzleloader the entire time or you can archery hunt. And that's kind of the segue into the multi-season opportunity as well. Uh, I mean, here we are. Now they've actually made it into rules and regs here in the wax that you can utilize a crossbow uh, during muzzleload season, not during archery season though, unless you have a special, uh, been given special uh, variants based on injury or something like that. And I may end up going there if I don't get this shoulder fixed. Looking at the, um, you know, last week I was asking folks if you had put in for um, multi-season tag, either uh, elk or deer, and a lot of folks chimed in, got nothing, got one, got both. A few of you uh, landed both. I now have eight points up to, uh, acquired to try and get that multi-season elk if I ever decide to take advantage of it. I've landed, and most of you probably as well, have landed the multi-season deer multiple times. And, of course, I was uh, I was uh, lucky to get that one again this year. Um, now, will I buy it? Uh, that's the, that's the difference. You know, uh, it is, um, what it is $139 for your multi-season deer. If you choose to purchase that after you draw that, now you don't have to buy it. You can just buy an over the counter, regular standard deer, which is going to run you 44 90 or 45 bucks. You can choose the multi-season. It's going to run you 139, you know, some change with tax, 140 bucks. What's that going to get you? Well, for, um, instance, if you look at your regulations, and we're talking blacktail, whitetail, and mule deer, because it's non-specific, you can move all over the state in certain areas, open GMUs, you know, for public hunting uh, during certain dates, and you can put those. You can put a road plan together. It might cost you a little traveling, and whatnot, but there are 113 days total that you could archery hunt for your deer season. That's like one third of the year. You could actually go out and try to, you know, find that one deer or maybe you go to the east side, you put in some time trying to get after that mule deer, that white tail doesn't come together. You can get over back over here on the west side. You can go after that late season black tail, uh, all of it archery hunting, 113 days. So if you think about spending 130 bucks, I mean, if you're out there on the road getting 40, 50 days in, you're spreading that, that uh, money out quite nicely and that it's not a big hit just for a short duration window. Of course, yeah, I've had the seasons where I've got the multi-season tag, and then I go punch my deer with my rifle in the first week, and then I'm wondering why I didn't just buy the general season tag. But um, for muzzleloader, so now during rifle season and muzzleloader season, uh, I could use the muzzleloader in any and all of that. That gives me a total of 51 days of opportunity to move around and go find deer uh, for my season. I'm not subjected to just a standard uh, modern rifle season of a couple weeks and then a late season of four additional days if I need it. I've actually expanded that out to 51 days. Modern rifle, you can move back and forth, east side, west side. You can find yourself 30 days of opportunity. Um, you know, it's uh, it's just, it's an, it's an option. I didn't dig into the elk. Uh, you get a number of great uh, days and more opportunity uh, with your elk multi-season as well. Standard fee on that is $50 and some change. Uh, for your multi-season tag, it's going to be 182 bucks. So I think if I eventually ever draw that, I'm probably going to go ahead and, 
and buy that because I would hunt uh, muzzleloader, say, for the entire elk season where I have modern rifle and muzzleloader opportunity. It's going to give me quite a bit more time and opportunity to get out after elk, uh, even though it costs you a little bit more money. So just trying to maximize your options. You know, hunting in Washington is getting tough. Tommy spends a lot of time hunting out of state. Now he does a few local hunts. Uh, he'll do elk and he'll do some whitetail on the east side. But as you know, if you follow us, he spends a lot of time jumping out of state to go uh, go get on some great hunts. And he uh, he knocked down a monster bull last year to his credit. And, um, you know, that's just putting in the work to figure it all out and get out of state and go make it happen. So there is that opportunity. It's become more competitive. The online processes for getting your tags out of state can be a little bit hectic and a bit of a headache. Um, but it's achievable. I'm, you know... I just wanted to bring out a couple things here this evening that show that we have some adjustments to some of our regs, and there's a host of them in there. Um, it gets to be pretty boring reading, to be quite honest, but there are a few that stand out that you look at and go, huh, maybe I'll take advantage of that. And then, of course, the multi-season tag option is something to consider. If you do put in the $6.60 for the application you get drawn, then you just have to think about, do you want to spend that extra money? how many days is it going to give me an opportunity if I can take advantage of that? So just some things to think about um, as we uh, as we move through summer and start thinking about that uh, fall opportunity. Okay, jumping out for a quick break. We come back. Josiah Dar, JDAR Guided Fishing. We talk Spring Chinook on the Willamette. See what's going on there. Don't go anywhere. After this break, right here, Fish on Northwest. Allied, the new leader in heavy gauge aluminum boats. Allied boats have standard reverse chine and lifting rakes to help you plane faster and run at lower RPMs. Allied boats have several models to choose from, ranging from a 19-foot Mustang all the way up to a 32-foot Liberator. So regardless of what type of heavy gauge aluminum boats you are looking for, Allied boats will have it for you. Contact Allied boats today to learn more about these incredible fishing machines. Hey guys, I'm Big Mike. Come on down to the Edge Pro Shop and see me. We've got all the best brands under one roof. We've got Hawken, Procure, Short Bus, Pro Troll, Yakima Bait, Get Them Dry Jigs, Northwest Bait Scent, Daiwa Reels, North Fork Lures, North Wild, Brad's, Superfly, Rocky Mountain Tackle, and of course, the greatest rods ever built, Edge rods. All right, welcome back here in studio, Dwayne England. And next up on the old agenda here, Josiah Dar, Jadar Guided Fishing. Uh, you can find him at uh, facebook.com uh, forward slash Jadar number four. Best way to get a hold of him. You can also email him up, jadarfishing at gmail.com. Jadar, uh, uh, Josiah, welcome to the show tonight, buddy. I know you're out there on the river right now. You're actually in the troll, aren't you? Yeah, we are, man. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. So throw some numbers at you as we've been, you and I've been talking this last week and kind of paying attention to the slow progression, the slow growth of the, this run materializing. Uh, last, uh, let's see, two weeks ago, April 4th, when we were doing the show, we had 124 springers over the dam. Two weeks later, as of today, we got 1,595. And yesterday, we actually had a single day of 448, finally getting over Bonneville. So you're over there on the Willamette. How's the participation recreational have been recreational wise been on the Willamette with, uh, you know, up till now, these, these very low numbers uh, coming in. Uh, I'd say overall, it's actually quite a bit less. I mean, the success rate's been down a little bit just because the numbers are lower. 
So I think less people are trying. But the guys that are out here doing it are still getting them. I mean, it, especially the guys that do it every day. There's a lot of dudes down here, especially around Scat Boost, that are, you know, kind of local guys. Same, you know, you see the same dozen boats certain places every day, you know, plus or minus a handful of other dudes. But um, a lot of the dudes that are doing it every day that know their stuff, still getting fish every day, you know. I'm still hooking fish every day. Um, got a couple today, you know. Seems like every time you go out there and actually put some effort in, you're going to get bit. It's just, you know, it's not. It's not gangbusters, but if you put the time in, you're going to get your fish. Yeah, you got to work for them a little bit. A little bit. You know, uh, you and I also talked a few weeks ago and just kind of looking at the progression of things. You know, we seem to get a heck of a lot of sea lions coming in now, uh, especially when those smelt come charging in. Boy, they follow them smelt in the rivers, and they like to hang up and around there. Um, In your observation, what you're seeing, a lot of sea lions around still, and uh, I got to believe you think that we're it's still continuing to have quite a high impact on the returning fish on the early part of the run. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I think our, I think our numbers are down a little bit earlier, probably because there's a lot more sea lions, you know, closer to February and March when the smelts are in here than there is later. Um, and then I just start seeing less and less and less sea lions. And then it seems like the numbers go up. I kind of get this feeling that those things are sort of affecting the beginning half of the run because they're definitely a lot more fish later than there used to be or, or maybe guys just quit trying, but there's a lot of fish clearing in July now. You know, we got we got quite a few springers, and it makes for one heck of a long season. Yeah, the early part of that run really seems to be lacking luster, and you know, getting later and later. And uh, one one point you bring out is that you think a lot of them are getting whacked by the abundance of sea lions in the river as they fall them smelt in, and they're hanging around just you know taking the front edge of that run off, uh, having quite a significant impact. Um, you know, as I mentioned, we had a uh, 1,595 over the dam as of today. The 10-year average is actually, and we're talking Columbia fish, the 10-year average is actually 2,200 fish, and that marker is April 13th. So here we are, April 18th, and we have, you know, five, seven, six, seven hundred fish to go to even get to the 10-year average, and we're going to be a, a week late. The preseason forecast on the Willamette for where you're fishing is 50,000. You think we're going to see that this year? You think they'll come in? I mean, you say the trickle in clear till July. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a little bit tough sledding to start, but I bet you by the time we're done, it gets right back in there where you think it's going to, you know, where it's supposed to be. They tend to just keep coming. I mean, you said those Bonneville numbers were 400 yesterday. Yeah. I'll, I'll, you know, we were talking about how they grow exponentially. It's, you know, right. it seems to be like, I would be surprised if, you know, we look at it today and it's six or 700, you know, that like, they, it, when it starts to go, they tend to go pretty quick. I would not be surprised at all if they grew for the next eight, nine, ten days in a row, and you'll see the guys at Drano start drilling them here pretty quick. Yeah, that's a good point. And then, of course, you'll start seeing participation of folks going up. They've been watching the dam numbers and just waiting yep. till it looks like, hey, it's, you know, maybe maybe I have a chance to get one now. Talk a little bit about the conditions this year on the Willamette. You know, typically it runs with quite a bit of turbidity. Uh, we had a very mild winter. We don't have a big snow melt now going on. Water temperatures are pretty mild for this time of year. What's the conditions on the Willamette look like? Uh, it's about as low and clear water. As, I mean, I'm physically literally looking at it right now. And, you know, I've been trolling down here most of my life. There's a lot of bank, a lot of pilings. I mean, it's it's on the low end of low. We haven't had any real, like, big flush. Um, that being said, I think you'd see the numbers, I wouldn't say skyrocket, but they'll jump a pile. Say we had, you know, three-quarters of an inch of rain, a half an inch of rain, or whatever down in Eugene, and it really – kind of brain throughout the valley and pushed a bunch of dirt in the river and dirtied this thing up. It's no different than fishing a small river on the coast. When you get a little bit of a flush like that, you're going to see a pretty good jump in the numbers. I, we just haven't had it. It's just been low and clear. And, you know, you, you fish plenty, man. You know well as I do, the hardest time to get them is typically low and clear. Yeah, for sure. All right, uh, don't go anywhere. Stay on the troll. If you grab one during the commercial break, we come back, maybe you'll be fighting that bugger. But uh, stick Ooh. stick around through the break. When we come back, uh, more with Josiah, we're going to talk techniques and some, some technique points to hopefully get you some success if you decide to go out after some of these springers on the Willamette. So don't go anywhere. We'll be back with Josiah Dar after this break right here at Fishing Northwest. I make my living catching fish, not only as a tournament angler, but as a guide as well. Catching fish is important, and Gamagatsu hooks for me, you know, they kind of help take the luck out of fishing a little bit just because they're a high quality hook. Obviously, have a really good reputation for being very strong and very sharp. Gamagatsu, I use their products every day in the boat, and, you know, big part of my success.
All Defiance boats are built without any structural wood materials. That is why all boats are backed with a lifetime warranty. All Defiance boats come standard with large fish boxes that are fully insulated so that you can ice your fish properly all day. All Defiance boats are foam flotation filled and unsinkable for the ultimate in safety while fishing offshore. Before you buy any boat, stop by or call Defiance Boats today to ensure you are getting the very best glass boat your money can buy. If you're looking for the best fishing rods in the world, you really do need to take a look at the edge rods. I designed and built new machinery, and I think this new machinery has enabled us to build blanks like no other company could build without this equipment. There is no other rods in the world that are as good as these rods. You owe it to yourself to take a good look at them. New days, new beginnings, new friends, New loves, new dreams, new goals, new scenery, new job. No matter what the next chapter holds, Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate will be there to help you find the new that's right for your lifestyle at any stage of your life. Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate. Expect better. All right, welcome back here in studio, Dwayne England and guest Josiah Dar, GDR Guided Fishing. And we're talking Spring Chinook on the Willamette. Now, Josiah, let's talk a little uh, conditions and presentation. So kind of walk us through with the conditions you have right now and how you're going after them. And then, you know, we got some rain in the forecast this weekend. It might do exactly what you just talked about before the break. We may get a little bump in water, a little bit of dirt getting flushed in, turbidity goes up. So a little dirtier water. Talk then again about what your transition to your rigging would be in comparison to what you're doing right now? So most guys, I mean, most of the program in here is, you know, triangles and herring, you know, tap and bottom, um, you know, four, five, six, eight ounces of lead somewhere in there. You know, there's some really nice flats in here that are really easy to, they kind of put them in a box a little bit to target, you know, easier to target them. Yeah. Um, so those flats are always money, but probably the thing that I would do different, and it ain't much, but I, I shorten my leaders up quite a bit from my triangles to my herring. When it gets a little dirtier, um, you know, for me, I always kind of look at my prop. If I can see my kicker prop, you know, it's probably not clean, but if I can see it, I'm, I'm fishing. Um, and I'll just, you know, retie my leaders real quick, just cut them real fast, retie them a foot or two, you know, but I'll cut them from 40 to 50 inches. I'll cut them down to, you know, 36, 30. Um, it seems kind of short, maybe shorter than most guys would want them, but, uh, ooh, there goes, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Realistically, though, I mean, we're fishing 20 inches behind a pro troll just flailing around. Right. So I don't think I don't think those fish are afraid of those triangles just kind of rolling past them. Well, I mean, it's an if attractor. Anything, it's an attractor, right? I mean, it's drawing. It's grabbing their attention. They're coming in, and then they then they find the bait. And I, I'm with you. I don't think they care how close it is to that flasher. No, no, I don't think they're very afraid of those little triangles. If anything, it's it doesn't hurt your cause at all. But yeah, I shorten them up a little bit. Um, right now, I'm pro trolling. Um, this morning I got one on a triangle and herring, uh, and then came up and fished this afternoon a little deeper water, kind of away from the crowd, and got another one to eat a super bait behind a pro troll. So you know, there's enough going on. I mean, we made two passes this morning down low, and then came up, made one pass up by uh, up river a little ways, and shoot, I mean, got two fish and three passes. I mean, I wasn't super upset about it. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's pretty good fishing. We're talking spring chinook, you know, not uh, yeah. not fall chinook. Um, Let's talk a little bit about uh, when it's a uh, go, no go. Like you, you said, you basically in that condition point right now where you can run either triangle with herring or the 360 with the Brad's cup plug. What, uh, what size cup plug, which, uh, which color and how long a liter are you running those behind your 360? So right now it's kind of the same thing, but opposite. I, I lengthen them up a little bit behind my 360s. Um, I lengthen them up just a tiny bit. And, uh, so they're probably 40, 45 inches on my pro troll leaders, which is definitely a little further than you'd think. You're not really getting the action for the pro troll on them, right, but yeah. it's, you know, the water's not as warm. These fish are not as snappy as fall fish. So I think you end up, you know, I don't think you really want it quite as close to that thing. Um, I've always done a little better, uh, a little longer in the spring than I have in the fall. So, you know, and this is super clear, so it's not hurting anything. They can. I mean, shoot, they can see. It's just a matter of getting them to go. These fish are just a little more complicated than your fall Chinook that are a little, little snappier critters. Yeah. What, uh, you going full on chrome, pearl troll, and how much lead? 
Uh, I think I got tens on all the rods right now just to kind of hold them in place. I probably could get by with less, but I sort of like to have it more because it doesn't swing them up. Keeps them in the zone a little better when I turn. Doesn't let them swing out of the, you know, it doesn't quite create too much drag and lift them real high. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm using tens on all my rods right now. That way I can really tell, you know, my front rods, and my back rods. I kind of know exactly where everything is. Sure. Um, that's, I really like using more weight than less when it comes to pro trolling. Um, I, you know, I don't love it for fighting the fish, but frankly, I'd rather just hook them. So, yeah, you got to um, hook them first, right? So I'm, I'm you you. I, like, I like a little heavier weight on there as well. What are you, uh, what are you stuffing inside those, uh, Brad's cup plugs? Uh, so the one I got today was on one of the originals. Um, and then I've got a couple on the originals this year and I've got a couple actually on the kokanee cup plug, the little tiny guys. Yeah, for sure. Well, the water's clear enough, right? So yeah. Yeah. You putting tuna in them or what? Yep, just tuna. You can add just about any scent you want. I've tried just about all of you can think of. I seem to do pretty good with just tuna and maybe just a little bit of something. Uh, but honestly, I don't uh, I don't worry about it too terribly much. One thing I will say is I think scent goes a long ways. I don't think you need very much. Sure. I think if anything, by using too much, you might be kind of hurting yourself. Okay. So, you know, they can smell parts per billion, right? They can smell oh, their yeah, creek. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, that's they a good smell point. Their, they can smell their creek they're going up to in, you know, the middle of valley or wherever they're heading so i don't i'm not too worried about i'm not too worried about whether or not they can smell my my stuff i know they i know they know it's there you know it's there it's a matter of getting to go yeah they're just you know springers are just harder than everything else just is what it is okay so uh as we as we wind it down here if the fish don't show in the willamette if you're not going to get the numbers that you need to get and you're not fishing late into june and you know the, the front edge of july will you move up river on the columbia <laughs> like uh wind or drano or anything like that will you be fishing those areas I would. Um, I don't have a Washington license to go do that. The way the wind is set up it sort of makes it so you have to have a Washington license. That's true. Um, that being said, you know, I'll still do it. But one thing I will tell you about that is later in the year, this gets pretty stinking unoccupied. You know, that time of year, June, um, it can still be weirdly good for late. You know, it's just not a lot of pressure. You know, you might not be going over 100 fish a day. But if you go over 10 fish a day and they haven't had another boat run over them all day, they're, they're, they're more amped to go. Yeah. So. I think uh, I always kind of tell people I'd rather fish for 10 fish by myself than 100 fish for 10 people. Yeah, well, um, that makes sense. So, I'm, you, you know, a lot of guys leave. This does get tough. And, it, you know, I've, I've kind of had the perk of living here my whole life. So I sort of figured that out just a little bit. Yeah, but you got a little you, bit of an edge there for sure. Uh, you just keep grinding. It's It, it, it keeps happening. You know, it, it'll keep happening for quite a while. You got it. Uh, okay, got some openings coming up. Where can folks uh, track you down and book a trip? You know, I tell a lot of people to find me on Facebook. You know, um, I'm pretty easy to get to on Facebook or Instagram. Yeah. Um, you know, jdarfishing at gmail.com is pretty easy. But honestly, there's there's some pretty good fishing ahead. I mean, I'd say overall, May is the best month of the year. Yes, it's a little slower start, but I, you know, I don't think it's so slow to start that I'd be too terribly concerned yet. We also have extremely low clear water. I mean, that is that is my least favorite situation, you know, and you got to think about this river the same as a little coastal river. I mean, if it's low and clear, there not a lot of them come like they do when it you know bumps a little. So yeah, I'm not sure. too worried about it. I think we're going to see a pretty good push here through May, especially if we get some weather. Right on. Well, uh, May is a prime time to be there if the weather uh, holds out and it's sunny days. He doesn't want to go catch spring chinook with uh, with Jadar. So hey, buddy, appreciate yeah. you taking time. Always uh, good to get your insight on what's going on. And uh, might have to pick up the phone and give you a call. I need to go get, get me a spring chinook. Yeah, man, pick a day. It's pretty. We're just doing a little afternoon troll now for fun, you know, to do the show. And I thought it'd be a, a cool backdrop. But I mean, evenings like this have produced a lot of fish for me. Just having a good time with my friends in the past. Yeah, sounds like a plan. All right, buddy. He is uh, Jadar, Josiah Dar, Jadar Guided Fishing. Uh, look him up, give him a call, and uh, book a trip. We're going to jump out for a quick break. We come back. Got a number of events and uh, fishing opportunities, openings coming up that you need to pay attention to. We're running down that list. We come back after this break right here, Fish on Northwest. A Northwest favorite for almost 40 years, Arima boats are manufactured with pride in Bremerton, Washington. All Arima boats are built without any structural wood materials. That is why Arima boats are backed with a lifetime warranty. Arima can offer every boat with Honda outboard packages so that you can take advantage of the reliability and five year top to prop warranty from your Honda outboard. Call or stop by Arima Boats today and let them help you get into your very next boat. Yep, for sure. Oh yeah, big fish. Yeah, buddy. Nice fish. 
Beauty. Gorgeous fish. Bobby's on the board. We got a good one. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh geez, come on. Nice fish. Nice fish. Support from Northwest Sportsmen make Federal Ammunition the world's leading ammunition manufacturer. Federal uses the industry's finest materials, giving you reliable ammunition that delivers superb accuracy and optimum performance. Northwest hunters rely on Sportco to provide the best selection and prices in the Northwest since 1985. Sportco and Outdoor Emporium in Fife and Seattle. Your journey begins here. All right, welcome back here to Wayne England. And uh, a couple things, uh, points of interest I thought maybe you'd like to hear about if you're living under a rock and not aware uh, and to uh, try to stave off any confusion. The official opening of trout season, lowland lake trout season in Washington State is always the fourth Saturday of April. They say fourth Saturday because actually once in a while, April does have five Saturdays. This year, April 27th, lowland lake opener for trout fishing. It also kicks off the annual WDFW uh, season-long trout derby, the annual statewide trout derby. Hundreds of lowland lakes will have been stocked with trout. You can search for local fishing spots and access on the lowland lakes page. You can also find out how many fish DFW has stocked in each lake by checking the stocking reports. That's really easy to do. Go to WDFW, just simply Google WDFW trout stocking report 2024, and you're gonna see all that come up. The annual derby, will go from April 27th through October 31st. More than 100 lakes will be stocked. There are over 100 participating businesses offering over 800 prizes valued at over $42,000. Here at Summit Lake, um, we actually have six tagged fish out here in our backyard that are sponsored by Fish on Northwest. You catch a fish with one of our tags in it, you call the phone number, we prize you up uh, when you read us a little digital number on the tag. We prize you up with some FHM swag. Now, over the last few years, we've given away a little bit of it. Um, it's a pretty good sized lake. They put six fish in here with tags, and uh, Shing and I would love to put some FHM swag in your hands. Um, something else to think about we get uh, 10,000 fish the week before opening day here at Summit Lake. They get another 10,000 fish dumped in the week before our kids' trout derby, and then they'll put another 10,000 in in June. We get 30,000 trout here at Summit Lake, uh, not to mention the great kokanee fishing. Um, also, one thing they do down here, down the street at the community center, opening day of trout season is the fisherman's breakfast, which is fantastic. You know what? Bring the family out, bring the kids, go catch some fish, or stop and have breakfast, then go fish the lake. It's just a great uh, atmosphere out here. Plenty of fish to get after. They do put some triploids in this lake, some jumbos, and uh, it's always great to uh, to tie in with some of those, especially for the kids. So check out the DFW Derby page. Uh, simply Google it, and you're going to come up with all the info and where those fish are stocked and how many. Um, something else going on. Opening day and seasons are set for deep water lingcod fishing, if you are not paying attention. Uh, Westport Halibut and lingcod opens May 2nd through the 30th. There are 12 days of opportunity, um, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays for halibut and lingcod on those prospective days to get through season. And if we have more quota left, they'll extend that out, of course. Uh, Westport Deepwater Lingcod is June 1st through the 15th. That's when we get out, you know, you're fishing six, seven, 800 feet, get those uh, dinosaurs that we love to go after. Uh, something else to keep note of, the Skagit Summer Run Chinook opens June 1st. Nice to see we're going to get that season. And, of course, Westport Ocean, Coho, and Chinook opens June 30th. So we got a lot of fishing opportunity to look forward to, starting off with these trout fisheries. And that's a great time to put your hands on some fantastic bait <laughs> that you can use for your lingcod and halibut days out there on the ocean. Something else I want to remind you all of, we talked about it last week, but it's worth mentioning once again, uh, our annual Kids Trout Derby, okay? Uh, the fourth annual 
Uh, Fish on Northwest Kids Trout Derby here at Summit Lake. We mentioned it last week. We're mentioning it again. Third Saturday in May. Once again, which means this year it falls on Mountain Day, May 18th. Uh, daylight start time. Uh, must be in line for weigh-in by 11 o'clock. Event will be held at the Summit Lake Community Center. Completely free for kids 14 and under. Uh, free t-shirt and raffle ticket for every kid. Um, public WDFW boat launch at the lake with some shoreline access. Mission Outdoors is on board once again to provide breakfast, lunch, and drinks. Washington State Guides Association providing boats to get families and kids out on the water. Seats are limited. WDFW uh, will also be providing the trout pond, um, stocking it with fish, and we'll have the trout pond here at the facility for kids five and under. So a whole lot of things going on. That one is growing exponentially every year, and we're going to have tons of prizes to give away. Kid, uh, Fish Hunt Northwest annual Kids Trout Derby here at Summer Lake. Don't go anywhere. Jumping out for a quick break. We come back, closing out the show. Defiance Marine is the one-stop shop for the Pacific Northwest Angler. Defiance Marine guarantees the best price on a new and best service on a repower for your current boat. Defiance Marine is a Honda premier dealership and one of the largest on the West Coast. Defiance Marine is a boat dealer who proudly sells Defiance Allied in Arima boats. All boats are built by West Coast fishermen for West Coast fishermen. Defiance Marine has all your boating needs to help you get out on the water. If you're looking for the best fishing rods in the world, you really do need to take a look at the edge rods. I designed and built new machinery, and I think this new machinery has enabled us to build blanks like no other company can build without this equipment. There is no other rods in the world that are as good as these rods. You owe it to yourself to take a good look at them. For more than 90 years, you've entrusted one brand to guide you towards living the lifestyle you've always dreamed of. Now you can entrust affiliated Better Homes and Gardens real estate professionals to interpret your needs and help you find the home in which to live your dream through every stage of your home buying or selling process. And through every stage of your life, there's Better Homes and Gardens real estate. Expect better. All right, welcome back here in studio as we wind it down. Uh, thanks for tuning in this evening, and I uh, hope you enjoyed some of the info. Uh, yeah, Tommy should be back next week. Pretty sure he'll get his truck fixed. Um, hey, before we go, a quick note, uh, some additional fisheries that were announced. The Grays Harbor region, which I'm very passionate about, as you guys all know. Uh, looks like we get a two-fish limit, non-select, on coho from uh, starting in the harbor September 16th through uh, November 30th. And then our tributaries and the shayless will not open up October 1st through November 30th, uh, two fish limit. Again, non-select on coho release all adult Chinook and chum. Um, the other part of that is we get into December. There was discussions that they were going to remove December off the table completely, but it looks like we at least get to retain one fish and hopefully we can get into steelhead setting season and not be bounced out of our Chehalis Basin and tributaries um, this season as we go after our one coho and or start uh, scraping up a few of those early hatchery returning steelhead. We haven't been able to fish those systems for the past three years for steelhead, and it's getting pretty frustrating. Uh, in the next coming weeks, I will be on the phone with a few of the folks there out of Region 6 and start getting some steelhead numbers to see how this past season performed as far as return for both hatchery and wild fish. And I think we're going to like the numbers, hopefully. Fingers crossed. It's going to do it for us this week here. Fish on Northwest. Weather's going to be fantastic once we get through the weekend. So get out and go get something done. Enjoy. Get some time on the water or get out in the woods and get a turkey. Uh, have a great week. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next time right here at Fish on Northwest. <laughs>